Hello everyone, I'm Drumat and today we're going to do a how to carry Talia guide. I'm in Diamond Tree currently at 80 LP, around there, somewhere. And uh, this is uh, the over the video analysis and tutorial after the, I just played this game. So this is like, I played this game like 5 minutes ago. And I decided just to do an overview over it because, overview over it, that's not worth it. Because I think you can learn a lot of things from that. Now, let me just do this, excellent, and yeah. Now, if you look a bit of the Tinkoms, first we invade and they do not defend properly. I don't know Hecarim or Velkos, they should have defended properly, they should defend better. Anyway, uh, we're against the Velkos with a lot of mastery points, a pretty good one. Uh, still, that's a Diamond Tree Velkos which we can play good against. But we're not interested really in killing him a lot because we know that he will be probably playing defensive if he's a smart player. He's playing with teleport, he's not intended. He does not want to fight me, okay? And he has a full AP, mostly AP comp, with a top lane AD and uh, Ash. But some magic resist against Velkos and Fiddlesticks and Morgana will do wonders. Now, here on the lane phase, we just do the standard farming. I'm going to speed it up a little until the important moments. Uh, by the way, we invaded, so basically we get their rights. Now our bot lane died already, which is kind of disappointing. Our bot lane is a duo, but they didn't play that good early until we started to kind of help them. But you'll notice during this game that Jax is a pretty good uh, player. I mean, not a smartphone necessarily, probably not one, but he kind of is able to keep his lane and to win it slowly. So when we'll see that we have a player that's good, we will try to play with him and snowball with him as much as we can. Now also, I usually expect Kha'Zix to do well against the Fiddlestick, so you have to play to your jungle strengths, okay? So check which of the junglers are better. Now Fiddlestick here realizes that he doesn't have a jungle, so he will path towards Kha'Zix red, probably? Yeah, where we will follow him, and uh, there the fun will start. So, uh, I put a word knowingly at red, but I think it will end by the time Fiddlestick reaches it. I don't really... Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Uh, but Kha'Zix still has time to reach it because uh, he will get there in time. And you will see on the map, and this is just plain farming, you will see that he will reach uh, Fiddlestick here. I'm gonna speed it up. I'm just farming, okay? I don't really have a clue that Fiddlestick is there. I would assume that he's uh, at... Uh, Goles, but I seen him turn around on that word. So here we see we see the start of a fight. I'm in a very good position and the lane is pushed. I have to push early, especially against the Velkos if I can. And uh, here we simply see a fight. Here he could have baited us to flash here. But Kazix flashed. I seen him and I went for the kill. I didn't even flash here. And here we followed, we started going for the Velkos, he misplaced a bit, but he will flash and he will just recall here. Bot lane lost a little time here, but our bot lane, we're not counting on them, remember that. Count on the players, you think they have potential to scale and think they have potential to carry. Now, at the end of the game I was in top 3 at damage dealt and also had the best KDA. Uh, objectively, I think I did a lot around the map and you'll see more in the following seconds but i will talk a little about on carrying and on moments to on the moments that you should take the risk or where you shouldn't take the risk and we will get to that section soon now currently i'm just farming on the mid lane again it's quite a boring lane phase but against the velcos if he's good and playing defensive you will go for the kill rarely because he will stay back and because he will understand that against the good talia there's really nothing much he can do uh, because if the Talia dodges his E and uses W for his ult, there's really not much as I said to do. Now, I try here an early roam, they have a word there, I back off. Okay, I notice instantly they back off, I don't read on it. Fiddle 6 does Fiddle 6 things, which is weird. He's very behind now because of the early start, of the 2 buff Kha'Zix start, and we gave our jungler a lot of advantage, so we had to play by it. Whenever your jungler gets advantage, you have to play by it. Uh, okay, moving on, moving forward. Going a bit deep here, doing all the poke I can. I will lose a bit of CS. I will lose the CS battle, I'm gonna be honest with it, because I tend to move a lot around the map and try to create pressure elsewhere. 
For example, here I just wiggled around the idea that, okay, I'm going for this. I don't know why I instantly didn't double her. I got scared of Velkos because he still has, he doesn't have mana for what I thought he did. But here uh, I could have done better and get the kill on Fiddlesticks. That was a mistake on my part, but it doesn't really matter. Now here Velkos teleports and this is the moment that I hate most. It's where I need to recall, leaving my tower in the open freely. Game's not won yet, but still Jax is very fed as you can see. Uh, but game's still not won yet. Okay. Now, moving a little forward. Speeding it up. Standard farming. Uh, when you're doing this, when you're trying to carry, the first thing you have to assess is that if you can kill your opponent or not. And against most assassins, you probably will not be able to. But you can do something else. You can push and you can play towards other lanes. If you can, if you can play with your jungler because you're a very strong early champion. And usually, most assassins get banned. I ban permanently Katarina, Yasuo, Zed. Yasuo is not even that strong in 2 versus 2 trades early on. But Yasuo and Z uh, Zed and Katarina get banned quite often. Now, here I just roamed it, even though they have the vision word. Morgana didn't, very, didn't have very much time to react. Now, I'm gonna pause here. This vision word is extremely weak against Tulia. And I find it hilarious that they have it. They have vision word here. I don't know. How I went, I'd, if I went through it, no, I didn't. Look, look at this. This is an interesting exercise, okay? This is a very bad vision word if you play to your strengths properly. Now, I want to show you something here. I want to show you the vision. Wait. <laughs> this is fantastic. You seeing this? This is the lesson on vision that you should get from this. They had no idea that I'm here. I mean, they would have, they should have suspected that I'm coming from here. And I find it hilarious that even though Morgana still goes towards this queue, even though I popped in their vision, this, this is Diamond 3, by the way, Diamond 3, Diamond 4, Diamond 2, or up West. Now, this is an impossible kill to refuse, even if she flashes here, there's no way I'll miss this kill. And probably that's why she didn't flash here either. Maybe if she flashed from here somewhere. But the lesson on vision, just scroll back on the video and watch it again. It's extremely important to think. Well, I checked this buff, there was no word. I didn't care about this vision word because as you've seen, there's no way he could reach me. Kazik doing Kazik's things. Velkos mispositioning. We, we knew Velkos still had no flash, roughly. It was close, but roughly. Because... Uh, we removed it a while ago when, if you remember, when we fought for Crab, when we killed Fiddlesticks and uh, he escaped narrowly. And also, our bot lane killed Ash now that I got advantage for Morgana. I'm really curious how Sona that. Oh my god, really? Is this what's going to happen? Wow. Okay. Well, Kazakh didn't mind much. But it doesn't matter. I got the plates. So, another thing of trying to hard carry a game in against the mage that you might not kill, such as Xerath, Velko, Ziggs and Sol, is try to play around the vision, if you can. Now, in this game, the mistake that I did is that I did not play with Red Trinket fast enough, and that I did not buy vision words. Honestly, on my first recall on the Amplifying Tom recall, I did not buy vision word because I did not have the gold. Like, it was like, narrowly missing the spot. I mean, I needed 50 gold more. I should have I should have recalled later, possibly another wave, but I probably would have delayed everything on roams and so and uh, I didn't mind much anyway. But if you're playing against Atalia as a mid laner, you have to word this bash. You have to word either this one or this one and ping like a maniac whenever, whenever your opponent is missing. Now, against Velkos, funnily enough, Every time I roamed, or every time I was going bot, I started pinging like a maniac that Velkos is missing from mid lane, which he was. I even pinged that Fiddlesticks might be around the map. Now, I expected Fiddlesticks here bot, and he will get the kill soon, exactly. But, that thing is still... It doesn't bother me that much. Now here I had to roam bot to push their back, their bot back lane back a bit, so uh, I went and took part of this wave. And then I started going back to the mid lane, even though, here it's an interesting thing, I suspected their Velkos might go to this zone and he would want me, but I had flash, so 
I probably wouldn't have died. I expected here him to come. And I also expected here to be around. I didn't care much because I knew Fiddlesticks was probably far. Had a rough idea, but didn't count on it. Now, there might be differences. Some players might play weirdly, but you try. You should try to generally expect. Obviously, in lower elos, don't try to expect much because, well, lower elos, you can't expect much from someone who doesn't know what to do. I sometimes don't know what I do, but I try to work around that as much as I can. Here is probably my only death of the game and my only fail. I did an alt. He didn't have... Fiddlesticks didn't have here uh, his alt. And Jax was targeted by the tower. And I felt a bit abandoned here by the fact that Hecarim had no mana. And I got some tower shots. But uh, here Jax probably could have killed Hecarim, I'd say. Even though they turn around here, they'll see Velkos coming. And it, it, it still kills Fiddlesticks, but later on. My idea probably would have been better due to the fact that we'd have killed someone faster and he might even escape. We, we both would have died regardless in here. Our bot lane doesn't do that fine. Now, this was my only death of the game. And I want to show you a misplay just for the sake of it. Just a small lesson here. Okay, what does Kazik do? He has flash. Okay, here's a flashless Velkos, okay? Oh, he had flash. Never mind. But here, anyway. By this point, who do you think would win? Velkos has ult. And it, he used it like this. Kha'Zix still has his stealth speed. Why doesn't Kha'Zix just, you know, go like two meters here? This is tragic. And the pings are from me. I really got pissed at that because it was a free kill and feeding my mid laner is not a thing that I really love, especially when you have huge advantage that could have been changed. I lost another CS here. Now, at this point I start to try to go for the mid lane tower. I expect Fiddlesticks around. He's here. He has ult. He didn't try to come close, probably see me recall, but I expect, okay, a bit of Fiddlesticks to come through. And I play, as, as you can see, I play around very defensively. Now, my bot lane did the miracle of getting the kill, which is great, but as every time, as I see this, there's an obvious Fiddlestick ult coming, because you don't have vision of Fiddlesticks, you just took his rights, we knew that, well, we didn't know, but we expected to be him, to be around somewhere, especially if they are hitting a tower. This is the favorite spot of a Fiddlestick, by the way. And there is an interesting thing going on. I didn't have ult, I didn't have my summoners, and while I had words here, I decided to take a risk and not follow my bot lane here into the upcoming 3 versus 3 as you can see. Normally I can trust this Jax because he did pretty good plays for now and he won his lane. And you can see this tower is extremely low HP. Now, at this point, even if they all 3 die here, I'm certain that I will take this tower first because it will take a while for them all three to die, to push the entire wave into the tower and to also kill it. Without, important, without their ADC. Now, you have mages with ults, but you have a fat jacks nearby with an ult ready. That gives him tons of magic resist. So let's see how this plays. I, I will just push towards the tower. I will not follow this. Personally, decide not to follow. I kind of expected that Fiddlesticks to be here, but they, they just backed off. Bot lane recalling, but still... Jax went for the engage, and there, there's going to be a fight which I did not even see because I was focusing on mid lane. Caitlyn does not get the kill here. Jax, look what's happening here. Jax is so tanky that a full fiddlesticks ult couldn't kill him. Now, there might be some deaths. I'm certain someone might die here. That was an amazing ult. But do we really care about that? Do we really care about the fact that they all died when the tower is this much HP? Also, Kha'Zix is here, Kha'Zix got the kill, I didn't mind much that they died, even without me, it's 3 for 3, okay? And here, after I took the mid lane turret, even though I could have got, I could got, get more kills on bot, that would still have been beneficial for me, uh, this room, this uh, tower, turret right there. Now, they have an idea that I come, they see me. And they should naturally recall. They took the tower, but I got it first, so I don't really care about it. It was low HP anyway. Okay. Now, here I go 
full fighting on them. I know Hecarim isn't doing much. I didn't have the ignite yet. And here I could have just from this point would, would you jump in this? I, I really I really wonder. Now my strategy was to go and hit instantly Hecarim. Ash if you can see here she had no sums from the I don't know, maybe previous fight or this one. I did not watch it entirely right now, but probably I was when I was hitting the target. I wasn't doing anything else. But in this point, I have Ignite up and Ash is low. And I narrowly dodged that W, which was amazing. An ult comes on Ash, which starts to make things looking pretty well for me. And the funny thing is that they almost escaped. But for some reason... They both decide to turn. And this gave me a huge advantage, which will forward me, will push me towards great heights during this game and will make me extremely fed. And I will try to abuse this advantage. And as you can see, even though I uh, denied, uh, even though I didn't go bot when it was maybe necessary, I got a lot of gold from the tower trade. First tower is quite important. Not going to a roam is a bad idea when you can do it but this was an open discussion and i'd say i didn't necessarily do a bad decision there maybe i would have turned the fight sooner maybe i wouldn't have done that much because in the end it turned okay although we did not we would have not won the fight it would have been even or maybe a little in their advantage with the kill if i would not follow but the tower would have still been there now the game is pretty much over when this thing happens and i find it hilarious that this fiddlesticks is doing that, trying to understand the, the dynamic, but yeah. Okay. And now let's just move a bit, a little bit forward. Try to get more kills around the map here. I noticed there might be a Valkos. I said, okay, I go. I roamed on this one. He recalled and he defensively played that one by being going a little back by uh, stand, standing where it's needed. Now here I go around a thousand words. Did I really not see that word? What? Hold on. That was oddly interesting. How did I miss that one? Wait. Blue, death. blue side, sorry. Okay. I'm literally on top of it. How did I miss it? How did I miss it? Jesus. That's not <laughs> that's not a diamond thing to do. And uh, I probably don't deserve diamond if I'm that blind. But still, that word it was there for a lot of time. And even if it was there, it, it kind of did more harm than help for them. I finally see it. If you think about it, I would not kill Morgana if this word probably would have been here. there Because they thought it was safe on the river. Because of that little tiny vision uh, spec vision thingy and that's funny if you think about it in retrospect that's really funny and okay moving forward at this point when i'm snowbally at like this i'll just try to destroy the jungler as much as i can especially if it's a squishy one like a liz like fiddlesticks and well you can guess what happens here we even engage on a fight two versus three that is versus four sorry and i really love having a bruiser top that resists like jackson aurelia my hacker in because look how much he resists there in uh, in the middle of all of them dodge that q should have probably get hit by that q i noticed uh, that's that's a mistake and here i decide to follow the velcos because he was 4-2 and had a lot of farm and also maybe be I, that was a good idea because Ash will get caught regardless. But here, look what I did. I did not mind much of recalling. I did not mind much getting that Ash chased down. I went to the next location I could expect Fiddlesticks to be because Red is up. And as you can see on the map, there aren't many camps left. And we have a word on, uh, on that camp. So naturally, this camp... Well, this camp was not spawned but yeah, I expected him to go to the red directly because I might be there and so. And here I almost failed because of the way I positioned my spells. 
as you can see here I almost lost it but uh, good thing is that I position properly and he doesn't really have any damage getting the kill moving a little around the map more getting that but it's not stopping here not stopping here okay do not ever stop if you have the HP fast with Drake simply try to get snowbully because you will fall off late game so the main thing as in this tutorial the main thing that you should get from this tutorial as a level by level tutorial as a Talia guide as an anything is that when you have some kills you shouldn't steal the game you should you shouldn't just keep it afloat you should get as much as you can on the map now Kha'Zix here is doing triple kill stuff not really my kind of thing but the lesson the lesson behind it behind those snowbally things is that you should move around the map you should play with the red trinket which I do not and I always forget you should try to chase their how can I say under farm under leveled champions such as fiddlesticks maybe in this game such as most of them besides Velkos you, your target in this game shouldn't even be there Velkos if he's at those stats and the rest of them are those other stats now what's up with their uh, champions and words I, I really don't understand it they seen I'm on a word and fiddlesticks didn't bother much like, yeah, whatever another free kill and Karim is not suicidal he went back uh, I think they already got their lesson in the fight here I want to do an aggressive engagement and I realized wait I have a lot of bounty on my head and I don't have any vision I, tr I tried kind of to throw Morgana towards my team but uh, those plays are kind of hard to make and <laughs> just by that we killed instantly Ash. You can see here the power of a simple WEQ combo when you're extremely ahead. This is very snowbally by the way. You are ahead, you do a simple WEQ combo. Wait. And that's it. I, she wasn't probably not even in the range. I hit all my spells, Caitlyn hit an auto attack and probably a Q if I recall correctly, maybe not even a Q she just used it but the red buff from her was enough and it's hilariously it's hilarious how easily you can deal that much damage here I expected the sticks to be somewhere close to me but it was too late way too late for them went around got the corner got the three kills you see what I did I just walked around the entire map fully knowing fully knowing that there might be a few sticks and even not really caring about him much because Velkos and Morgana at that point they don't have besides the offer cause they don't have any damage they don't really have any damage and it takes an extremely skilled Velkos to actually kill multiple people by doing that geometry thingy that Velkos does and as you can see here I try to snipe I try to stay always in the bash always where I'm not near any vision words and any simple words regular words how can I call them and I just go and do my thing I try to stay around these zones as you can see here again I fully expect here to be clear of words and Morgana was the target there which I did a mistake but it's, it's fine in general because you don't really need to get every single kill there is but you should get most of them okay moving faster still doing my thing by the way still going in their jungler in their jungle fully expecting there to be clear of words now they seen me this is an interesting thing they seen me and they expected me to be there and I even get hit by that but the fact that I'm so ahead doesn't really doesn't really do anything to me even if Hecarim ulted there with Ignite up I would have still killed him because of the excessive advantage that I pretty much take advantage of that was a very bad sentence. <laughs> the excessive advantage that I had, that was the one. And here I expected the sticks to be around, maybe Hecarim, that's why I took the long way. I started pinging, the, let's do Baron like a maniac, I started going around. Uh, really, we should have just tried to get a close on the Baron. And another fight. Try to corner with the ult. You can see here push Velkos back, Sona dies doesn't matter, but Ash, their ADC, their single source of damage, probably, besides Velkos, 
you just instantly melt it. That's your target. They don't have any damage, any real damage. If you if you play properly, they will not be able to kill you if you jump smart. Now, of course, if you had flash, this would have been better. But in this scenario, even if you jumped on top of Ash and killed her, and then maybe died to a full Velkos combo, that wouldn't have been that bad. Because Velkos should be rooted in place, and Jax was nearby, and everyone was nearby. It's quite hard to one-shot someone as Velkos from point-blank range, which I was quite close to him. And even that... Uh, it takes a while to kill me now. Here is a flash for Fiddle 6. He still tries. He's just basically inting by this point. I mean, he inted for the whole game, but we kind of set up that in since minute one where we took, when we took their red buff and, well, then we denied his red buff from our side and then we denied him more and then we caught him and then I was constantly and he had, it takes a toll on you. It, it, it practically hurts you on the in the mental side. Trey Baron, by the way, because, well, there was no way Fiddle Sticks could have stopped us there at this point. The smite difference is too big anyway. I mean, if you're level 15 and you lose a smite battle to a cat, to a Fiddle Stick that's level 12, that's just sad and that's just on you when you can kill him and work properly. But yeah, one of the takeaways from this also here, if we kill on Ash. And would have been a free kill on Velkos too, but he teleported. One of the takeaways here, also check this out, is that one of the takeaways is that you should uh, play with sweeping with a uh, red trinket. And watch this. Fully expect a flash there, by the way. This is so sweet. This is so sweet. This is the. The, this is my love for Tulia, okay? This is where I, I keep my love for Tulia now. I do not understand that Hecarim thingy. But let's just stop right here. Also, if you want to see again that Velkos instant kill, let me just do it for you a little faster. Okay. Okay, here it is. And that was very predicted. Because, well, it was assumed that he will flash as he was going through the wall. If you don't have flash, if people don't have flash, usually they will sit in place and try to do their whole combo. He had ult, you know, he had ult, he didn't use it in the last fight. If he stays in place and just casts kills randomly, he will not flash. But, if he goes towards your wall, usually it's a high chance that he will flash. Because it's like, okay, I'm going towards I will flash it, I'm safe. Everyone thinks like that. So, the main takeaway from that is try to all when you see this opportunity, someone obviously going through the wall, towards the wall, he's going to flash away, so you can just do this uh, late W over the wall and push him back. Practically every time guaranteeing a kill if your team closes on that target. And it's a quite important thing to know, and you can do it one in five, ten games maybe. And it, it looks really cool, it's the thing that pings you usually, that gives you those satisfying pings, you should try it. Uh, but yeah, the main takeaways of this video guide or how to carry guide or whatever you want to call it. The main thing that you should try to do is try to establish some early lane dominance if you can. After that, try to go for vision words and the red trinket. Try to be there for your team as much as needed. If you cannot kill the opponent and go to and go clear those uh, those. Uh, enemy words and just go bot lane. Now, most of these things that I did this game, like at least 50% of it maybe, or more, it would have been denied if their team opened their eyes, that's one thing. This, so, open their eyes, and the other thing is, if they worded more precisely, or if Fiddlestick didn't in that much and didn't straight up into the, the, his jungle without expecting Atelier to be there to one shot him, to one shot him. Sorry for the misspell. Anyway, best thing is to buy the red trinket and some vision words. I advise for at least two, three vision words per game. That's a minimum, okay? You want to climb, that's a minimum. You have no idea how much vision is important. How important is the vision, sorry? I'm a bit tired, especially in lower elos. Vision in most lower elo games is practically non-existent. And you probably won't see that many supports or that many junglers to go for the red trinket. 
and you probably won't see them because they are lower elos and if they don't you as a lower elo person you can go for the right trinket and you can do that baron without the enemy team having words there so that's quite a difficult concept to remember as a lower elo player if you are one and if you want to climb you should try to get that trinket more often especially when your team doesn't get it if you don't get it you have the white the word trinket the simple one and you can abuse it too by putting words somewhere and then expecting someone to come over that word or to clear it and just doing a full wq combo and getting an instant kill i've did that lesson a bit i did the lesson many times actually in the past videos now vision as a roamer vision is the most important thing that you can have besides that again you have to assess that you can kill the opponent or not this victor this uh, velcos had 100,000 and so mastery points, I expect him to play defensively and to have a general idea about how the matchup will go. And he, compared to his team, played extremely nice, which is good for him, I guess, but other members didn't do that fine. And he probably wasn't there when it was necessary for them, and was there and didn't do enough because Velkoz well is not a roaming champion, so as a Velkoz, you should probably try, I don't know, maybe help your jungler, but in this 2 versus 2, his jungler should have known how to play defensively. Well, the first mistake of Velkos was that he did not defend Fiddle 6 Red, which is a great thing, which is a big thing on its own, because Kaz is going from our Red to their Red, it takes a bit of time and might appear, there might appear, ah, there might be appearing any other things along the way. So it's, it's interesting if you think about it in general. <sighs> That was a lot of talk, I think I will stop here, and I have some nice tutorials planned up for you, I will do it as often as I can, but uh, I will have a little different thingy coming up, you'll see soon, at maximum probably two weeks it will take me, but uh, you'll like it if you want to learn more Tulia, and uh, it's, uh, it's coming up. Uh, I will tell you more uh, probably in the next video or so, and we will see. And I really hope, by the way, you got something from this video because I don't really want to waste breath randomly. And I know some people, I'm seeing your comments, so thank you very much. And I know some people uh, really, really get uh, the message and really improve it, Lia. So I want to thank you for watching this and improving. And, oh, and I really have no voice left because how much long I was talking about? Is, it, is this 30 minutes? 32 minutes. Okay. My neck hurts like hell, but yeah. I want to thank you for watching these videos and being with me since maybe the channel started or later. And if you're a new person, I want you, uh, if you can, to join my Discord where we have to get yeah, discussion if you want, obviously. And we usually, I usually share videos there and also we talk, if you have questions, I try to answer them. Feel free to ask a lot of questions there or in comments, I try to always answer them as best as I can. I really hope you enjoyed this, guys, and see you next time. And Let's hope to have games like this from now on, and let's hope I'll get to Diamond too soon. I'm really close, and I have only good games if you check OPGG. And see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time, and goodbye.